In the world of Five Nights at Freddy's, the Mega Pizzaplex is the most ambitious project that we are aware of. Even with some technology resembling our current day kind, like iPads scattered about, it is clearly a distant future to ours. And not just because of the automated staff bots. While we don't have robotic servers like this on a casual dining experience level, we do have the technology to replicate this. But we have not come even close to recreating robots who are capable of true sentience and sapience. They can feel. They can think. You can look no further than the main band, who are clearly much more than just suited characters. They have their own distinct thoughts and feelings. Flaws. They are as close as you can possibly get to making these characters come to life. When given the chance, they are capable of free thought, of acknowledging and recognizing themselves, and making their own, if impulsive, decisions. But there's a price for being so self-aware. Today we are talking about Roxanne Wolf, the best example of how self-awareness laughs in the face of fitting the perfect mold, and how trying to establish both will only lead to ruin. Now, I did make a video about Roxy before, but this was only covering Security Breach's version of the character. Since then, we have gotten a lot more about her, and it is time to finally break down everything that has been revealed to us. Roxanne Wolf is a relatively new Fazbear and Friends character. She has no prior iterations that we are aware of, unless you count the occasionally cameoed Twisted Wolf as an earlier version of her. But due to their differences, I consider him more Beta Roxy than an actual Roxy version. But she is clearly a replacement for Foxy the Pirate. This is both seen in the names, their similar facial features and body types, and directly confirmed or strongly hinted at in Ruin, where it is revealed that Roxy's attraction replaced Foxy's, the western-themed Foxy's log ride. It is unclear if there was ever a Glamrock Foxy or not, but it seems like the unsuccessful western branding of Foxy led to Roxy overtaking the area and him reverting back to Pirate Foxy and his advertising getting moved into the daycare. From this, we can see that Roxy was created to appeal to an older demographic, really. Forget cowboys and pirates. Roxy's gimmick involves looking good, burning rubber, and rocking the keytar. Her attraction is faster, more hands-on, and she is depicted as more aloof and naturally cool. And that is the basic of who Roxanne Wolf is supposed to be. As far as advertising goes, Roxy is the cool one, the tough one, the beautiful one. And that's not princessy beauty. Roxy emphasizes makeup use and hair dyeing. She's built to be the one who seems so rebellious. If you're a kid. To lean into that teenage demographic and manage to snare in adult fans both in and outside the game. But this too comes with a price. Because how can you be perfect when one of the key elements to being like a human is having flaws? Roxy is supposed to be cool, and Roxy is all too aware of this. She knows that she's got to look her best, act untouchable, and be the one who everyone is admiring. She knows this because she constantly can be heard telling herself this, such as in her mirror, to build herself up. She has a huge ego that's being used as an airbag to deflect any damage, guarding her low and fragile self-esteem. But you wouldn't know that if you met her in person. Around guests, Roxy puts on the perfect act of being her character. Confident and cool and impressive, she knows what she's got. Though it is behind the scenes where we see Roxy at her worst. When hunting Gregory, she can be cold and catty. Sneak away, little coward. And threats such as, Nobody will miss you. When being tended to by employees, she comes off as demanding and difficult, quickly losing her patience and raising her voice when she feels affronted. There's no excusing this behavior, but we do know where it comes from. The insults Roxy spits are from a place of self-reflection. She says things that would hurt her, and her bossiness comes from her pride being wounded by a lack of autonomy. It all stems from that vulnerability that she has hidden away. The closest she gets to being vulnerable out in the open is when Freddy and Gregory end up stumbling upon her in her room midway through security breach. The two are using her elevator to leave parts in service and end up in her back room where they can hear her crying at her vanity. <laughs> I'm not a loser. It's not your fault. That kid is just lucky. If Gregory opens the door, Roxy will ask, Who's there? It's nothing. 
Don't get distracted. Don't be a loser. Get back out there! And then leave. But if Freddy barges through, she has this line. Freddy, get out of my room! Freddy also says, I'm going, I'm going. Or he's supposed to. The subtitles appear, but I don't think I've ever heard the line being activated. The point is, Roxy is too proud to show even the slightest bit of weakness, even towards Freddy, who is not only her bandmate, but has been shown to be, by all accounts, kind and understanding. While this exchange with Freddy might easily be written off as him just catching her at a bad time, I think there's plenty of little hints in marketing that Roxy is a bit of a lone wolf, and as we know, Roxy adheres to that image. Sure, there's plenty of ads of them hanging out together, but there's also quite a few of Roxy just doing her own thing. It's not enough to bank on, but considering that Roxy spends so much time building herself up in her mirror, I'd assume she does need plenty of time alone to do that. This would also explain why, even with all of her character building in these games, we haven't seen a significant relationship between her and any of her bandmates. Moving on, Roxy has two attractions, Roxy Raceway and the Glamrock Beauty Salon. Roxy Raceway is one of the largest attractions in the Pizzaplex, both in size and in scope. It's a go-kart racetrack where folks can come in and zip around the winding roads in a desert canyon-themed atmosphere. Young drivers can even ride alongside helpful driver staff bots. There's stands for people to watch the races, there's food stalls, uh, bumper cars, there's even party garages, which are these little garage-themed rooms to host birthday parties in. This is especially notable because most of the birthday parties seem to be housed at either the daycare party rooms or maybe in the atrium. In earlier builds of this map, there was also a window looking in from Bonnie Bull, but that was cut in the final build. At the time of security breach, Roxy Raceway is under construction and having a major renovation of the entranceway. It's never directly confirmed why, but there are issues with cracking on the concrete and caving on the racetrack, which, needless to say, is extremely dangerous. This is because of the massive sinkhole that is located underneath the raceway, which Fazbear Entertainment failed to fill, reinforce, or take into account when they put the heaviest attraction directly above it. Looks nice, cracks beneath the surface. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Roxy's relationship with her own attraction is rather complicated. It's never directly confirmed if she's even capable of racing in a go-kart, but she does get possessive of the track. While the raceway is closed, a message reports that she has been restless and lashing out on the test-running driver bots. Whenever they try to test-run on a track, she gets in the way for some reason. Another one explains that Roxy has been attacking and decapitating these driver staff bots who get in her way, her words. And yes, the irony is that Roxy puts herself in the way of the staff bots, deems them in her way, and then attacks them. This will eventually come back to bite her, as we will see later. Now, there isn't any indication that Roxy is intending to stall the opening of the raceway. Considering how much she desires the attention, it seems more likely that this lashing out is just due to frustration. Both the daycare attendant and Monty have been shown attacking staff bots and damaging property, though Roxy's motives seem to be like misplaced aggression and a sort of confused entitlement. That she's so wrapped up in her road and someone getting in her way on her road that she's willing to strike out even when it's going to stall reopening for even longer. It is perplexing, but a good example of how her behavior is affecting her situation on the whole. Her other attraction is a Glamrock Beauty Salon, which is connected to the raceway, is stylized in the same canyon theming, and is largely a hangout and meet and greet spot for Roxy herself, assumedly. Guests can drop in to get their hair and nails done, get their children done, get pictures with Roxy, and purchase Fazbear brand beauty products. Help Wanted 2 also shows Roxy herself getting her makeup done here. Now, while it is very possible that Roxy's just here getting glammed up from the minigame, it's also quite likely that Roxy probably does get her makeup done at the beauty salon. I would assume in front of guests as advertisement to encourage them to spend their money on a makeover or pick up a bottle of dye or a tube of rock and Roxy red lipstick on the way out. I will get back to the minigame later, but since we're discussing merch, let's dip into Roxy's branding. 
Like Chica is used as a figure to sell food, Roxy is both the figure of all things cool and cutting edge, but also the figurehead for said beauty products. And her goal is to get guests into her racetrack, which is likely the most expensive attraction even at basic pricing. And her methods of convincing... Sign up today and be a winner! Nobody likes a loser. Somehow, they're very effective. The advertising also portrays her as having a temper, such as when she's shown breaking her golf club in the Monty Golf poster. The last thing we'll cover before getting into her appearances is her upgrade. Like Chica and Monty, Roxy was gifted an upgraded part, hers being her special eyes. She can look with her special eyes and see through walls, though can't spot Gregory through flimsy baby carriages. It is assumed that these eyes may have some use on the raceway, but there have been complaints due to Roxy talking to bots through the walls in front of the customers. But Fast Fair Entertainment has made no adjustments, as they usually don't. Though compared to Chica's voice-causing staff bot malfunctions and Monty breaking Pizzaplex property, Roxy's issues seem much easier to overlook. Now let's get into Security Breach. We've covered an important scene in it earlier, but let's go over the full role. When it comes to Security Breach, Roxy is a formidable foe. She is the fastest animatronic, supposedly. She is agile, capable of pouncing with teeth and claws, and is even able to sniff Gregory out of a hiding spot. This works about 50-50% of the time. Her first appearance is on stage in the intro with the other Glamrocks, where she is shown playing it up for the audience, swinging cords and hiking legs, and generally putting on a show. She is next spotted by Gregory when he's crawling through the vent over her room, when he peeks in and spies on her talking to herself in the mirror. Your performance was perfect tonight! Thank you. Your hair is beautiful. Your tail is beautiful. Everyone was watching you. Everyone loves you. Everyone wants to be you. You are the best! Thank you. I am the best. I am the best. Roxy reappears when Gregory is heading through the basement. After separating from Freddy, Monty comes busting through a gate and Gregory makes a run for it. Roxy then throws herself up against another fence up ahead when he runs past her. After this point, Roxy isn't seen for a while. She can spawn in the daycare after Gregory's tossed out by Sun, but has no significant role. That is, unless you head up to the prize counter for the optional fire escape mission. On the way, you have to head through the East Arcade, and it is Roxy who will pursue you through this area. Once Gregory makes it to the security office, Roxy and Monty both stalk around outside as the office goes under lockdown, with the doors open, before leaving into the prize counter once it's over, which Gregory unfortunately has to venture through as well to make it to the fire escape. Roxy is the greater threat here as Monty tends to stay glued behind the counters and in the storage room area, while Roxy makes her way around the prize counter proper. Upon trying and failing to make it out, there is a cutscene where Roxy becomes aware of Gregory's location, and you must hide as she makes her way into the VIP section, then sneak by once she goes past. The biggest threat in this area is that parts of it are sectioned off by gates. You cannot open these gates, but with Roxy's security clearance, she is able to walk straight through them, so she can readily cut you off at the pass. After making it to the elevator, Gregory is caught by Vanessa and the game continues on. After escaping Vanny, two minutes later, Gregory is summoned to the construction zone outside of Roxy Raceway, where Freddy has unexpectedly shut down. He sends Gregory through to the rehearsal room and to get a backstage pass, and he has to sneak past Roxy in tight hallways to retrieve it. Then fight off Roxy and Monty again in another security office lockdown in the larger security office behind the stage. After successfully evading them, you must evade them again to put in the show stage disc to head down the parts and service. Now, up until now, all of Roxy's interactions have been relatively basic. She's just been a common enemy stalking around, usually alongside Monty, with nothing really standing out. And then we have the green room scene that I mentioned earlier. I didn't say it then, but this moment is very important, as this is one of the only scenes in Security Breach 
that is solely for character building, and one of the only in the game where the Glamrocks other than Freddy get a spotlight on their behavior. Neither Chica nor Monty get one of these, and if we'll be honest, it's probably because Roxy was so popular even before release that she did. This is likely supposed to be a parallel to the scene earlier, except instead of building herself up, Roxy is a mess, crying, berating herself, and pumping herself up in the same breath. And she's so distracted that her door may open and she'll simply say, it's nothing, and leave. After which she'll be in Rockstar Row for a short time. I just wanted to point this out because I found this out while I was looking around looking for pictures and clips online. So, Vanessa leaves Parts and Service through Roxy's elevator, and that's how Freddy and Gregory are able to do so as well. And when they get upstairs, Roxy is then crying and berating herself, which means one of two things. Vanessa either walked through the room where Roxy was crying without interrupting her, or Vanessa said something to Roxy and that's what made Roxy cry. And knowing how Vanessa talks to the animatronics, even going so far as to threaten Freddy, and knowing how fragile Roxy is, that's probably what happened. Because at this point, Vanessa is her superior. She's taking direct commands from her, so it wasn't like Roxy could lash back out at her. That's just a thought. It's a while before Roxy appears again. Gregory is given the option to either deal with Chica or Monty. Either way, after getting them and upgrading Freddy with their part, Freddy tells Gregory to use the upgrade they acquired to head into Roxy Raceway so they can find a way to deal with her. Allow me to repeat that. Freddy tells Gregory to go to Roxy Raceway and deal with Roxy. Now that I have been upgraded, I should be able to access the Roxy Raceway. I have not been there for a very long time, but perhaps you can find some clues on how to deal with Roxy while you are there. I think this line might have been left over from the initial draft when Freddy was possessed. There's a lot of oddness surrounding Freddy's ordeal passing out in front of Roxy Raceway, and either Freddy suddenly becomes a pathological liar, or there was a plot element carved out. And I assume the latter knowing what I do about the missing Shattered Freddy segment. Regardless, Gregory heads to Roxy Raceway where Roxy is prowling around. You wander around until you find specific duffel bags or stumble upon a broken driver bot or a dance pass in one of the party garages. The driver bot's head pops off and is busted, but if it's repaired, it can be used on a functional but headless driver bot on the other side of the raceway. After heading to the arcade to repair the head, you can put it on the bot and the cutscene commences. Now, before I continue, I should pull back the curtain a bit. This was not initially a cutscene, but a go-kart minigame. Data miners were able to find the bones of the cart mechanics and even staff bot lines that would have belonged to the driver bot as it taught you to drive. Take the cart out of neutral. Lightly give it some gas. Let off the clutch. Avoid the red asphalt. Not too fast. Watch the curb. Avoid the hones. But like many things, they were cut from the final game. But regardless of minigame or cutscene, the final results are the same as the effects of Roxy's insecurity rear their ugly head once more. As mentioned in the messages I covered earlier, when staff bots are testing the track, Roxy is thrown into a blind rage. One where logic and reason goes out the window and the proud wolf puts her perfect unbreakable image to the test by confronting the challenger head on. Gregory is driving around the track when Roxy spots him and runs down the bleachers before jumping down onto the track. Seeing her, Gregory goes to swerve and is thrown from the cart as it tumbles over itself and down the track towards Roxy. She doesn't have a chance to move. It doesn't matter how headstrong Roxy is, her face has always been her weak spot. My face! My face! My face! Roxy is struck by the cart and it and her break through the underside of the track tunnel and tumble into the space below. She is pinned under the cart, her face horribly disfigured, her eyes sticking out. Gregory climbs down beside her and retrieves her eyes before going to leave through a blocked door. But Roxy is down, but she's not out. Gregory is barely able to get out of the way before Roxy breaks down the door and begins to stalk the room searching for him. Roxy has been shattered, 
blinded and must use scent and sound to hunt you down. And she will, now more feral, hunched down and stalking around with her claws bared and her face partially gutted. She sobs and tries to assure herself, but the words are empty. Everybody still loves me, right? I am still beautiful. The disturbing part here is that if you listen to Roxy's lines and what she's saying close enough, you start to realize... My hair is ruined. I just need a little work done. She's not upset that she was just rendered blind. She's upset because of how she looks, because her perfect image has been severely damaged. That, above everything else, shows how fixated Roxy is on her own appearance, in which she overlooks the true major loss, her ability to see, and instead worries about how others might see her. Her stumbling around in severe disarray, telling herself that she just needs a little work done, that she's still beautiful, trying to convince herself when you know she doesn't truly believe it. It's disturbing. Unlike Monty and Chica, Roxy seems just as aware and cohesive as Freddy is, and yet, this is an amount of delusion that we only see at this worst bottom-of-the-barrel, rock-bottom point. And the thing is, Roxy did this to herself. She willingly jumped down in front of a moving go-kart. And it wasn't just to stop Gregory. She's done it before and destroyed the bots she's done it to. She just didn't anticipate the speed, expect the blowout and the cart to come flying at her. But she put herself there. Because Roxanne Wolf owns the road, and she may tell herself that she's untouchable, but even she doesn't believe it. Roxy continues to stalk Gregory, breaking down doors, throwing herself in any direction with little concern for her own safety. Something only more apparent when they make it to this strange room that is currently on fire. Roxy is so determined to find Gregory that she walks directly through flames to find him, uncaring of the continued damage to her already more vulnerable body. Now, some of Roxy's damage may look like it is burn damage. There's sooty spots and her tail's fur is completely gone, when realistically it probably wouldn't have been fully shredded from the accident alone. This is likely because at one point Roxy had a burning model, one where her inner metals were heated by the fire in this room. Likely the rest of her damage would have been sustained in this room, but they couldn't get that implemented before release. It would have been reasonably complicated, though I would go out on a limb and say that we could probably go ahead and attribute her burn damage to this room, even though she was shown with it beforehand. But Gregory escapes through a vent, and Roxy eventually finds her way up out of that room and back into the Pizzaplex, where she can be spotted around, such as in the center of the atrium, including in the burn trap boss fight. But that is the end of Roxy's involvement in Security Breach. Now, like when I talked about Chica, I'm going to cover Help Wanted 2 next before Ruin, as it technically takes place before, during, and directly after Security Breach. And like with Chica, Help Wanted 2 gives us a better look at Roxy's personality. In fact, Help Wanted 2 answers a notable question that Ruin introduced but did not explain. In Help Wanted 2, Roxy's starring role are in two of the Glamrock Beauty Salon levels. In the first one, we are put in the shoes of a worker tasked with doing Roxy's makeup before a show. Welcome to my world-famous glam rock beauty salon. Here, we make children beautiful, presentable, and socially acceptable. Right now, we have more important things to deal with. You need to get me ready for my next performance. First of all, this gives us not forced of all? First of all, this gives us not only a better look at what the salon does, but gives us a feel for their advertising campaign. The salon doesn't just promise to make your child beautiful, it promises to make them presentable, using that edge of belittlement to entice possible customers into being better, to looking better, to make them question if they're good enough. An appropriate reflection of Roxy's own self-reflection issues. This also gives us a better look at how Roxy treats the employees, and while it initially starts off as normal enough, Roxy quickly becomes ridiculously demanding and starts to lose her patience almost immediately after you start to work. Roxy is incapable of stopping herself from micromanaging. She is so fixated on her own image 
that the idea of someone else having to step in and make her up just drives her insane. You can tell. We know Roxy is proud and insecure, and that's only worsened when she is forced to put her image into someone else's hands. The sheer magnitude of this issue is expressed by the fact that she can't even handle the worker looking away for a moment just to do the makeup. What are you looking at? What's so important over there? <sighs> you won't last long in this industry. Is it because she's the star and deserves all the attention, like she says? Or is it because when they are not looking, she assumes they're judging her in some way? I would say both, honestly. The worst part is, at the end of the day, Roxy gets the final say on the makeup. But it's all auto-generated. She can sit there, get dolled up, and then look to see if it fits. She can't do it herself. She can't decide the colors. She can just decide which preset looks best. I'm just not feeling it. Roxy is simply not in a good position. She has no control here at the Pizzaplex, at her own salon. The decision is taken entirely out of her hands. At the end of the minigame, Roxy talks herself up and does some speech exercises before assumedly going off to her show. Finally, ready for showtime. Think, energy, always smile. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. All in all, a good look at how Roxy's own problems affect others and sh how quick she is to lash out. And she hides those issues behind a veil of feigned egotism and self-importance. For us who have seen her at her worst, we can understand why she acts this way. But for an unfortunate worker stuck doing Roxy's makeup, she might literally bite your head off if you don't appeal to her every whim. The next level is no less eye-opening as we are tasked with dolling up Roxy after she has been horribly disfigured. How bad is it? Be honest. To anyone with eyes, it's obvious that makeup cannot fix this. But instead of seeking a technician, I suppose she can't, Roxy goes to the salon to try and cover the damage. She doesn't need it fixed. She just needs it to look good. And yet she still wants your attention on her. She still needs you to be looking at her and working on her. But this time when she gets frustrated, she goes into fits. <laughs> if these fits are not calmed down, Roxy will attack. But thankfully, to her credit, Roxy actually does have a moment of insight and is able to tell you how to calm her down. You must use the Roxy walkie to replicate her own voice and spout out the same phrases she at one point told herself so many times in the mirror. She is the only one who can get herself to calm down. Here's a little tip. If I ever get in a mood, use the walkie. It calms me. You don't have to say a thing ever. Ever. This moment of acknowledgement is not too surprising. Sometimes people who have mood swings or moments of panic can then reflect and recognize what they did. It's the fact that alongside so much denial that Roxy can realize she's out of line and tell you what to do is so telling. Maybe it suggests that underneath all of these skin-deep issues, Roxy does perhaps care and doesn't want to lose her temper like she does. Or maybe it's just because she doesn't want to lose the one person working on her. Either way, it's effective in calming her down. But unfortunately, nothing is good enough. No amount of makeup is good enough. There are fake mouths and eyes on the turnaround. You could technically rebuild her face in a superficial but marginally better way. But she refuses. It's not good enough. Truth is, in this state, Roxy probably wouldn't have been happy with anything except perfection. She already takes her appearance so seriously that the slightest fault drives her mad. So this was never reasonably fixable. Eventually, Roxy gets fed up and demands the mask. Ugh, just give me that mask and get out! A lone metal mask appears on the roundabout, and once handed to her, she puts it on and turns away, telling you to leave and plotting how to find Gregory. Now, the question Help Wanted to answers is about this mask. In Ruin, Roxy unexpectedly has a different endoskeleton face, one with a jaw that even moves. It was unclear why this change occurred, well, except to add a port onto her face for a big moment where Cassie has to use it, but the theory that it was, in fact, a mask became popular, and then was confirmed that Help wanted to. 
Notably, there are differences in her endoskeleton that are not explained. But that is the end of Help Wanted 2 for Roxy. It tells us more about how she treats others, shows a major quirk in her insecurity, the need for constant eye contact as validation, and even gives us more of Shattered Roxy's mental state. It enforces that together exterior, cracks beneath the surface comparison one might make to her raceway. On to Ruin, where we see the after-effects of Roxy's shattering and the fall of the Pizzaplex. Abandoned by Fazbear Entertainment, all of the animatronics have fallen into disarray, and Roxy is no exception. She has deteriorated even further, with most of her exterior having worn away, leaving only her endo truly intact. With the mask, she now has part of her face remaining, but it is a cold shell of what she once had. Though, peculiarly enough, she's one of the few animatronics that still seems to have her mind together. While Monty has become completely feral and Chica is almost entirely like a zombie, Ruin Freddy is entirely brainless, Roxy still seems to have a grasp on what's going on and what happened last. She's just in such a broken state, there's not really much she can do about it. Cassie, the young girl we play as, finds Roxy in the remains of the Glamrock Beauty Salon. Cassie is established through the game up until this point to be a big fan of Roxy's, and we'll get to why in a minute. But she is shown wearing clothing styled after hers, painting her nails like hers, and even directly mentions Roxy as her favorite when looking at her Roxy radio. Roxy is crying, and Cassie sympathizes. Poor Roxy. Huh? Who's there? Roxy, hearing her, gets up abruptly and looks around before suddenly hearing something else and, assuming it's Gregory, sprints off into the raceway to find him. At that point, ruined Roxy becomes a threat who Cassie must avoid. If she catches her, she will slam her to the floor and sink her teeth into her face. In the end, Roxy does find her regardless. Cassie is escaping through a door when Roxy grabs her by the arm and demands her eyes back, to which Cassie yells. Roxy is startled by this and lets her go. The two are then separated. During this time of separation, Cassie is informed that she is to decommission Roxy if she wants to continue on her rescue mission. She gets this opportunity when, later on, she finds Roxy pinned under a go-kart. It's then that Roxy truly recognizes Cassie, and we get their backstory as a significantly softer Roxy reflects on Cassie's special day, or her last birthday party. It has been some time since I saw you last. If I remember correctly, it is on the 11th. I remember because you are number one. Twice. Have you booked your party? I'm sure your friends will show up this time. So to clarify what happened, Cassie had a birthday party at the Pizzaplex, likely because her father was an employee there. She invited other kids, but none of them showed up, leaving Roxy to be the one who was there for Cassie. We see cutouts of what was likely Cassie before and during the party, dolled up in makeup like Roxy's and crying. I think it goes without saying that likely Roxy sees herself in Cassie, or at least she saw herself in that moment. A crying child drenched in makeup just wanting to be popular and have friends, but finding herself alone. It is no wonder that Roxy would latch on to that memory above all the other nameless children who she attended the parties of, especially since, you know, Cassie was the only kid there, giving them plenty of one-on-one -on -one time. But this isn't the only reason Roxy is suddenly nice. And what I mean is, Roxy in this scene is not just friendly to Cassie. She doesn't sound anything like the Roxy we've heard up until this moment, not even in Help Wanted 2. It's very noticeable. It was sort of believed that Roxy was just nice to anyone who isn't Gregory, but Roxy's treatment towards the makeup artist shows her as being just as impatient and ready to jump the moment she gets displeased. Not as angry as with Gregory, but not the schmoozy sweetie and ruin. So, it's just Cassie, right? Well, maybe, but I noticed something. Listen to Roxy's line delivery and security breach. Keep searching. He can't hide forever. Freddy, get out of my room! And help on it too. Still not feeling it. Do you think all this just happens? I want something different. And in ruin. Gregory? You can't hide forever. I'm sorry. 
I... Error. And after Roxy is damaged and meets Cassie. 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 Welcome back, Cassie. Do you still like carrot cake? I love carrot cake. Happy birthday, Cassie. There's a difference. When Roxy is talking to Cassie, she doesn't sound like herself. Her words are halting and robotic, a little confused. Like she goes from acknowledging her horrible situation to suddenly not being aware that the Pizzaplex is in the state it's in. Does that sound familiar? Have you booked your party? I'm sure your friends will show up this time. I need to clean up before we can open in the morning. Oh, this place will be flooded with kids. A fountain is a decorative reservoir used for discharging water. Roxy isn't just being extremely nice because it's Cassie. Roxy's in safe mode. This safe mode somehow simplifies the animatronic and makes them more friendly. At first, I thought it was just a Freddy thing, who is shown to absolutely be in safe mode during the intro to security breach, but Eclipse also exhibits this behavior after the daycare attendant is rebooted, similar to Freddy's reboot. Sweet, blissfully unaware, and Roxy is showing the same behavior. This isn't to say that Roxy wouldn't be nicer to Cassie. She shows regret attacking her. But this out-of-character shift, beyond just nice Roxy to abnormally nice Roxy, is likely a result of being in safe mode. But this reunion is cut unfortunately short when Cassie is forced to shut Roxy down. Roxy blissfully fades into oblivion. For a little while. For this, surprisingly, isn't the end for Roxy as when Cassie is tricked into the prison of the Mimic and is nearly grabbed by it, none other than Roxy appears to fight him off, telling Cassie to run while she deals with him. This truly is the redeeming moment for Roxy because unless she is only fighting Mimic because he sounds like Gregory, she is putting herself in danger for someone else. Someone so prideful and outwardly self-centered is capable of doing this. Regardless of if she's in safe mode or not, she proved that she could. Roxy has proven that she can be more than just a victim to her own vices. And all it took was breaking time and space to somehow get down into the sinkhole in the nick of time to do it. Cassie escapes as Roxy is left to do battle with Mimic. And then we don't know what happens. Well, no, we do know what happens. You just can't hear it well in-game, and even if you could, I don't think you'd want to. Here is the sound file clean, and here is the final fight between Roxy and the Mimic. In case you're having trouble hearing it, or just making out what's happening, because it is pretty difficult to make sense of it, there are two Roxies. One is Roxy, and the other is Mimic, who begins to copy Roxy. Now right at the end, one of them gasps, and there is a loud crash. Then another says, what I think is, I am awesome. But it doesn't sound like Roxy. And then it is the Mimic who jumps out and chases Cassie. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that Roxy is broken beyond repaired or dead, but it does mean that in the last moments of ruin, we hear Roxy's voice calling to Cassie in the elevator, and at this time we simply do not know who that was. Though, even if bodied by Mimic, I don't think this is the end for Roxanne Wolf. Even with what can be argued to be a redemption arc, something tells me that this might not be the end. Maybe that's just wishful thinking, maybe that's just because this feels so anticlimactic, but sometimes things are like that. If this is the end, at least Roxy went out like a real rock star, like the cool wolf she was always striving to emulate. But that aside, if this isn't the end, is there any hope for Roxy? Up against her crippling self-image issues and poisonous programming? Yes. Assuming that the Mimic didn't kill her, she still has a chance. The difference between Roxy and, say, Glamrock Chica was that while Chica didn't recognize that she needed help, Roxy can see her issues and has up until now refused to let others in. 
robot or not, in her circumstances, it is through support that she would be able to cope with this demon that she's been dealing with. To have enough a reason to exist, say to protect Cassie, would be healthy for her and might help her grow past this deeply set fixation on perfection. Because of that, there is more hope for her than, say, Chica or Monty. But she has to get out of that pit, figuratively and literally, if she's ever going to have any chance of moving forward. It's all up in the air for now, but whatever comes next, it'll be a long road to recovery. She just has to be willing to take it and ride it all the way to the end. Thank you for watching.